Avengers! Hello everyone and welcome back to Excelsior, the world's number one Marvel's Avengers podcast. I'm your director, Christian Buckley, as always, joining me on this very fine day in May, the Apex legend, Jack Martin. Excelsior, Christian, it's a great May day. Good to be here with you, talking all things this video game and other stuff, Marvel. Yes, it's, uh, what is it now, two weeks since there's been an episode? No, it was just one. Right. Yeah, we had a we had a bye week last week. Yeah, I went to the home of one Steve Rogers. That's know. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How how was that experience? I saw you do some Nintendo related stuff there. Yes, I took a trip on down to New York, spent some days in Brooklyn in the city. Uh, it was very nice, nice little fun vacation for me, uh, essentially, but. Yeah, I, I know there's a there's a statue of Captain America somewhere in Brooklyn. Next time I go down there, I'll I'll try and make it a priority to find it. So is that true? I didn't know that. I'm like ninety percent sure it's true. <laughs> I think I've That's seen a picture of it. But oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool to see. Yeah. So what about you? How are you doing? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Nothing. Um really changing at the moment i'm very excited about all the star wars stuff that's happening right now yeah star wars celebrations ongoing so getting a lot of news a couple trailers here and there um so yeah everything i'm sure on jedi knights is uh is very exciting oh yeah it's gonna be popping when i get to talk to mike tomorrow so uh yeah um I, i'm gonna i have to go like into work tomorrow mm-hmm. but i want to catch the episodes of kenobi before i do so getting up very early there's two episodes coming out tomorrow so i i want to make sure i see those because spoilers will be inevitable tomorrow yeah it's gonna suck but i will wake up at 5 a.m yep that's exactly what i'm doing (laughs) gotta do it uh boy but we got a lot to talk about in the world of marvel's avengers this week surprisingly a lot there's all jack the majority of the doc this week is words about this game yeah i know who would have imagined right (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, Let's just dive into Fury's report, get things going, see what's new to the game this week. The double resource event has returned from 526, that is today, through May 30th. You'll be able to earn double resources. You can use units out of that. You can buy shipments. Uh, You're not thirsty for shipments, right? No. No uh i i don't do they have like a shipment skin right now i'm trying to even like think of what it is if they do i'm not aware of what it is like i think they would because they seem to have been doing one every month uh but i cannot tell you what it is right now maybe it's uh wasn't there like captain america in like a a jersey or something that they did for one yeah it's it's i've honestly haven't even but I I'm I may have deleted the game off my PS5. I'm trying to remember. Um, haven't played this game in like months, so I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I have not either. It's been a minute, but uh, we have maybe some reasons to check it out as of today. Uh, if you're on top of the game or returning to the game, though, from today as of recording, which is again Thursday, May 26th, up until. June 2nd, hero card skips are 50% off. Uh, I didn't even realize that you could buy a hero card skip. Did you? I I don't even know what that is. So the way it's listed as hero card skip, I because I m- might have misread it. I thought it was just a hero card, like 50% off hero cards like we've seen before. Hero card skip tells me, hey, you want that level 50 Thor outfit? Pay up. And you can just skip breeze through the whole thing and get all the rewards. Really? Yeah, that's that's what I'd assume this is. Like, I can pull up the uh, the blog again and see if there's. I'm. I'm I don't even know if I've interacted with a hero card. Are they talking about like? They're not talking about the comics. Um, so hero card. Hero I honestly card have no clue. <laughs> tells you how long it's been. The hero card is the ten dollar battle pass for a character. Oh, gotcha yes so oh oh i see what you're saying um yeah 
the thing I did in like a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So if you want to progress through that, that's 50% off. Mm -hmm. So I still have to finish the Spider-Man one. I will, I will play my way through that. I am good on dipping into the wallet for that. Yeah, no, I, that's, it's just one of those things you'll naturally do over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the current event going on in the game right now is the Tachyon Anomaly event. It is back once again, running through the ninth, but it is the first event post patch 2.4, which we will get to in a brief moment to give context to why that could mean something. But, uh, there is a marketplace in this game. It gets updated more than anything else. Jack, what is in the marketplace this week? Yeah, I'll I'll cover the one that I think is a little, I guess, more exciting. I don't really know. Um, but this is from a couple weeks ago. This is uh, Iron Man's Civil War outfit. That's in the marketplace. I know a lot of people were saying that probably should have been a shipment skin, uh, but it's in there if you want it. I think it looks fine. I'm not really one of the guys saying Civil War's Iron Man suit is my favorite. Kind of just looks like another Iron Man suit, but that's in there. What do you think about this one? Uh, they could have told me that this was a Marvel's Avengers original, and I would have believed them because it is. Yep. <laughs> it, it, no, it really is just like a standard kind of Iron Man suit. And I feel like every time he pops up in a non-Iron Man or Avengers movie, it's like the same vibe of an Iron Man suit. It's like you made it for the toy. I mean, you're always doing that. But like think of Spider-Man Homecoming also very strange just generic silver thrown in there like it's a, just a weird suit dude yeah i can't even think of that one yeah shows you so there you go that's in there probably not worth your money um but it's there and uh this week is ms marvel's magnificent ms marvel outfit um this is based on a comic ms marvel number one or volume one number five um very gold a lot of gold throughout and some blue uh triangles in there i know there's a lot of triangles in video games on the dev side of things mm -hmm. and there's triangles on the suit Polygons, a little bit of meta-ness in there yeah um so there those are uh some red on the legs and stuff like that so um looks cool i'm not a big ms marvel guy in terms of playing her as one of my mains so i will not be getting this mm -hmm. but um seems like they don't like ms marvel players don't really get a lot of skins so nice to see one when they do pop up yeah i was gonna say the same thing it's nice to see ms marvel get a featured spotlight suit considering she's the game's main character and because the mcu suit takeover has been what feels like going for over a year at this point we don't we're about to get ms marvel in the mcu so we have not had any opportunity to translate on-screen suits to the uh, Marvel's Avengers, right? So I think uh, Kate Bishop has met with a similar fate, right? Where we've seen Kate once. We have, I think we got the one Kate outfit, right? I, I was confusing because mm -hmm. I think the Fortnite thing came at the same time. But um, yeah, maybe that'll change in the future of this game. But uh, it's nice to see a comic skin get brought up for her. Yep. Yeah, I imagine... Uh... Late June or July, we'll get the TV show, Ms. Marvel skin. For sure. But it will look better in Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> As oh. it always does. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, update updates. Do you want to start with the fun thing or the thing that's related to what we were just talking about? Uh, let's do the latter. Okay. So... I, I'm going to go off of what I said, not off of what is listed on the doc. So uh, patch 2.4 is out. Uh, we have reasons to maybe play events in Marvel's Avengers now. So, yeah, kind of, kind of. I don't know if I do quite yet. Sure. It's a start. Uh, yeah, I will read directly off the blog post and then we can discuss what the ramifications of this could be for us, for other players in the future of the game. So, sure. Uh, this was posted on Friday, May 20th. Happy Friday, y'all. Hope your weekend is off to a good start. 
next week, patch 2.4 will go live with a rework of the rewards you'll receive for participating in our limited time events, offering even more opportunities to power up your heroes. With this rework, there are now three mission chain types to complete during the limited time events like Tachyon Anomaly or Corrupted Vibranium. These two-week sprints will provide rewards for daily players and sustained play. Uh, the three mission chain types include meta mission chains, minor mission chains, and daily mission chains. Uh, the way those shake out are meta mission chains. Completing all tasks in a meta mission chain will offer up the best rewards during our limited time event. By completing the full list of daily and minor mission chains, you'll earn exotics above power level 120 for your entire roster. Even better, these superior exotics will drop at a 140 plus power level. Previously, 140 plus power level items could only be earned by endgame players who completed the family reunion Omega level threat or the discordant sound raid. For minor mission chains, uh, these mission chains are sometimes hero specific and offer another way to increase your power level on a per hero basis. And then daily mission chains, daily missions feed into the larger meta mission chain objective and will offer repeatable gear rewards for the entirety of the two week event. Uh, let's take a brief pause there. Do you have any thoughts on the three act structure we got going on here? Uh, it sounds like minor missions would be a nice way to just focus on specific heroes, but daily will build into the meta one for the overall event, which I think is honestly a, a good move to incentivize people to actually return and play because it's similar to maybe you have some insight from Apex, but like an event in Fortnite, it's like, hey, for the next two weeks, if you complete all these challenges, you get a big reward at the end of it all. And I think a big reward being exotics for everybody is nice, considering I only play like two people. You know? Yes. And I feel like we don't even need to get into like the nitty gritty below that. It's kind of just like word soup, um, in my opinion. But I, I, that was what you were saying was what my mind jumped to as an as a former apex player i guess i don't really play too much anymore but um they would have and still do have a two week long event that's focused around a particular theme maybe it introduces a new mode maybe it doesn't maybe it's more cos cosmetic focused but they have daily quests that you can do that will contribute to you get like a certain amount of points from doing like an objective and those points will accumulate over the duration of the event and once you get a certain amount uh you unlock rewards and you do it up to a certain point where if you do enough objectives you'll unlock everything that is available during that event um that that is free by unlocking things like this so it seems very similar to that and i would always jump into the apex events because there was always something that is really interesting to give out um, but those I think were all cosmetic focused and this is all gear focused. Um, and I've been saying for quite a while now that I'm not really incentivized by gear, even if it is like the most, um, like the most powerful gear you can get. I think it's very interesting that they'll give it to your entire roster. That's cool. But, um, I'm not, that's not really getting me back into this game. If it was like, Hey, we got a slew of like cosmetics that you can unlock, mm -hmm. um, over the course of this two week event then that's something different and that's something i i could potentially be interested in but i don't really care to jump in and get gear for a game i don't really play that much anymore yeah so i think the good thing here is that this allows like solo players a path to continue the gear grind without having to either matchmake or play with randoms or try and convince their friends to hop in for those higher level content things. Uh, that being said, there's still that question of like, okay, well, if you are doing the gear grind, what is the end goal of that? And I still think that's something that we have to find a new answer to post initial raid, right? Um, so I, I think, again, it's a good step and it's another piece of laying a foundation for hopefully a long future for the game. But uh, at the very least, it gives these events some sort of a structure now that I think was lacking before, where every time an event came around, it was like, but why? 
why would I do this? Or like, what am I chasing right. here? What, what is the point of it besides the fact that this is just in the game right now? Uh, this at least introduces a uniform structure for all the events in terms of progression. It gives you a limited time progression chain that seems achievable, right? I don't know how difficult it's going to be to complete the meta mission chain across these what two week periods they're saying but it, it it gives you a bit more of a finish line for people who like playing this game and want to return to playing this game and i think for the time being that is just a positive thing even if we still have lingering questions about the future yeah i do think it's a good update it's mm -hmm. just the fact that we're close to six months in on this year and we haven't really had any like content drops this is an update and like a patch rather than a content drop um i think it's a bit concerning like i i think it's it's great that like again at the end of the day this is like recycled content mm -hmm. like for the it's not like hey this is coming and we also have new events coming uh, it's hey this is like the restructuring of our old content that's like a year old mm -hmm. at this point um which i guess is fine like it, it it adds some sort of incentive but we've been playing these a lot of these for like a year plus now um close getting close to a year and it's just like well i, I it doesn't really incentivize me to jump in mm -hmm. they are good updates but you know i think at this point last year we had you know some semblance of content like we had a character drop and some events at this point but it's mm -hmm. kind of been very radio silent in terms of like anything substantial mm -hmm. yeah i i do have a couple more things later further down the um the post to see what you feel about there's like two uh q a sort of things that i think are just things they were assuming would be asked about the update uh the first and this is uh from the q a with Brian Wagner, who, if you remember, was brought on as a former Marvel Heroes Omega vet and then got brought in, I think at some point early last year as a system designer, has now been promoted to lead designer, which keep a pen in that. Um, the first question is, what were the main reasons for reworking rewards in this way? Uh, and they said that limited time events should be something to get motivated about even after repeat play. We have been getting feedback from players saying that the rewards available should be more consistent, so we looked at how we could standardize them, uh, and then gave each event a specific theme of exotics to give them a stronger identity, which I think is good, right? Because you and I have talked about this a lot in terms of wanting, like, think back to conversations we had about the, the raid, like, how cool would it be if we got a team skin set of vibranium themed armor for raid completion and while this isn't that i do think having a gear theme for each event does help right and we saw that a little bit when they introduced i think tachyon anomaly that was the first time we saw cosmic gear in, in the game and I, I think it's just a lot of things in my opinion that they're saying that makes me feel like it's building momentum to something, but how do you feel about that answer to the whole make it meaningful question? Yeah, it certainly adds more meaning to it, but again, at the end of the day, it doesn't really get me to get back. It's like minor updates that are good mm -hmm. um, to content we've been playing for a year plus, so it's it's not anything that's really too exciting, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Like it, it's, it, I think it's a good update for sure, but it's not anything that would get me to install a game again. Mm -hmm. uh, another quote I think is interesting in that response is saying, in terms of the 175 power level cap increase for solo players, um, in response to just the idea of a gear grind, uh, saying that one of the things the team's looking forward to for future end game content is how they add uh, reward chases while still allowing players who don't engage with endgame content to upgrade and this is something they'll talk more about later in the year so future endgame content and making solo players feel more rewarded for 
having something to progress and chase. If that's going to be gear, if it's going to be cosmetics, I would lean probably on gear based off the fact that most of their revenue so far is cosmetics. But does it give you hope to hear them say future end game content? Uh, not really, because I I think the plan is for all, the plan was kind of always for mm-hmm. them to support this game, but they they keep talking about end game content, but they really haven't revealed sure anything this year. Like it's june <laughs> by the time people will probably be listening to this mm-hmm. um it's just so bizarre like if they had something this year saying like hey we're not going to be talking too much about future content right now but it's because we're working on it right now and that's probably what's happening but they haven't really relayed that um effectively i don't think um because it's you know june <laughs> we don't we have had like no real substantial content so far this year um and the fact that Paul Tassi was like, oh, yeah, they had a roadmap, like, and they said the roadmap was going to be laid out at the end of last year. And it just kind of feels like after Spider-Man, this game's been, like, very noticeably radio silent. And that's, I don't know, it's really strange because I think they had really good momentum towards the end of last year. Well, Jack, the communication from Crystal, whatever it is right now, does not matter because Miller's out here once again dropping some some news nuggets on us. Uh, So through the 2.4 patch, uh, whatever method Miller has been using uh, (laughs) to figure out information about the game on the back end, there's a couple highlights. These could mean nothing. However, uh, a while back, Miller leaked that there is a multiplayer version of the MODOK fight from the end of the campaign uh has updated that now that there is voice lines from the multiplayer version of the fight that i think posted a link to on his twitter feed so it still exists don't know how that's progressing but in addition to that patrols are back on front and center for development uh also in parentheses said something about uh like boss bounties for patrols, which I think is interesting as a Destiny player. Um, And then mentioning that there's been an update to the Winter Soldier's gun in the game. So does that mean we're getting a Winter Soldier character update at some point this year, next year? I don't know, but... Yeah, I know they discussed Winter Soldier, or well, Miller's discussed Winter Soldier and War Machine. Uh Um, I, I think he was mentioning that War Machine development is kind of like fallen off a bit yeah it's put on um, ice like a while ago yeah. i think yeah who knows um man the multiplayer modok seems like the new taskmaster <laughs> <laughs> like for them to come out and be like hey we got a new multi like multiplayer version of the modok fight it's like yeah all right <laughs> Get, that doesn't help the case of them just like recycling content i know it's like somewhat different because now you can play it with friends but i don't know yeah, like none I, of that's very exciting. I haven't fought Modok in two years, so I will say if it was like a version of the Modok fight that was like new, like remember how when yeah. um in the campaign we fight Monica in her mech, and then when we do the Monica villain sector, I genuinely think that's a really fun and good boss fight, and it's, it's the same character just completely recontextualized with a new move set in a new environment. If it was more along the lines of that, I'd be super down for that. Because I do think you could design a really fun fight around MODOK. I just am struggling to see how the fight as it is would function well in multiplayer. So if, if it's along the lines of the Villain Sector Monica fight, when in terms of reinterpreting it, I'm super down for that. Just as a new large scale enemy to fight with friends, I'd be into it. Yeah. Yeah, if it's, if it's any, uh, if they do some, they can easily be like, oh, it's a clone and it's <laughs> at this new location or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's new mechanics to it. It's that'd Patton be, Oswalt. Be cool. The multiverse is oh, open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be um, funny. You hear that show got canceled? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I did, I did not like it. <laughs> that was like a Hulu Marvel thing? Yeah, yeah, it was like a it was like a Hulu original, very Robot Chicken vibes, but... It was like 
for depressed fathers, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember you saying it was like for 40 year old, like white comedian vibes yeah and i was like oh that sounds awful <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i watched two episodes and dipped it also didn't help that uh monica was one of the lead characters and i was like oh, oh great yeah. or she popped up i think at some point so uh well time for some stark realities then we're talking a lot about the up in the airness of this game uh via crystal dynamics tweeted about and popping up on my feed because of brian wagner talking about positions at crystal dynamics they are hiring multiple new staff members to work on marvel's avengers on the level of system designers level designers boss designers hero designers and a couple others so this comes after the embracer group purchase intent has begun again it's supposed to be wrapping up in september but jack is this the very slim 10% chance best case scenario that we talked about is this embracer wanting to funnel money into this game. Um, it's hard to say cause we don't know about like if, if the deal is, I don't think the deal has been finalized. Like you said, yeah, and we still have to, I think embracer still needs to hear from, um, uh, from like Marvel to like get actually continue using the license. Mm-hmm. So that's still something that's up in the air. Um, this seems like it's something that Crystal Dynamics is just still allowed to do um, before the... So I think Crystal Dynamic, Dynamics has these plans. Who knows like what will happen when they're actually bought by Embracer. So it's really hard for me to be <laughs> to be like positive about the future of this game um, just because there's been like a very... like There's been a lack of communication, I think, in terms of where we're actually heading mm-hmm. right now. Um so even though I think this is their intent to continue working on this game, it's unclear if that is going to be the case once Crystal is acquired. There's a thousand other projects they're working on. Um, and if Marvel even like continues to allow them to, to use the license. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because a lot of the things you said as well, like in terms of communication and just clarity about the future, I... I think their hands are tied right now just because we don't know like legally what's allowed to be discussed and done on their side in this transition period. Right. Like I would assume it would muddy waters if Embracer group went straight to Marvel right now and was like, Hey, so it's going to be cool if we just keep letting them do this for now. Right. Like you're cool with it already. Because that just seems like it's a lot of red tape problems. And we saw stuff with Microsoft and Activision and Bethesda. Those purchases, there was a lot of things that people were asking about for a long time that they could not talk about until it was over. So, Right. Um, I could potentially see a world where, like you said, Crystal is doing this on their own behalf to maybe bolster confidence in the future of Marvel's Avengers to maybe warm up to the idea of allowing them to continue working on the game um because uh brian wagner who has been promoted to lead designer of marvel's avengers um clearly has a passion and love for this universe and characters having worked on marvel heroes before which was a game that got canceled so yeah maybe this is just a move to try and present themselves and their faith in the project and the people working on the game in the best way so that when time does come it's a a better conversation i don't know yeah uh i i I don't know it's it's hard for me to be (laughs) excited about the future of the game just haven't heard anything in the past like five months um so like i'm glad that crystal themselves Seems poised to continue working on this um, into the future, but I, I we, we don't know if that will be the case Like once the studio is acquired. Yeah, so it's worth bringing up, it's worth keeping in mind that there clearly is still an intent to continue working on this game and give it a future. It's just a matter of what shakes out over the next couple months and when we hear about it again. I would love more than anything to get War Table presentations back please yeah 
I, I don't, can't even remember the last time we had one. Black think, Panther, maybe. I think Spider-Man. we had like three. I think we didn't even yeah. get a Spider-Man one. I don't think. Uh, yeah. I honestly don't know. So. Well, meanwhile, there's a few things going on in the greater Marvel universe. Uh, keeping within the realm of video games, two quick hits to talk about right now. Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is the Firaxis developers of XCOM developed Marvel strategy game that got delayed from March of this year to the second half of this year, is poised to have a revamp reveal this June. Uh, Tom Henderson is reporting this through things he's heard from his sources. I've seen a couple other outlets being like, yeah, we've heard similar things. The word revamp, though... The word revamp, Jack, what does that imply to you? That seems like it's going to look a little different. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's going to be some changes. I don't know. It feels like they, they probably have a different approach to marketing this game, maybe. Mm-hmm. What yeah. I, I like strategy games, right? I'm 20 hours into a Fire Emblem game that I started like a week and a half ago right now. I really like that genre. I love Marvel. And I love these characters in Midnight Suns. So when it was announced, super excited. When the gameplay stuff from Game Informer started coming out, I loved everything I heard from the interviews, but the actual gameplay had me a bit concerned because it has two of my least favorite things in games. Uh, cards and randomness. <laughs> so... <laughs> hate randomness i man like the whole roguelike of it all like hades is the exception for me hades hit for a number of reasons where it like made the rogue elements make sense but for midnight suns the way that it works is your characters and your heroes they don't progress and learn moves as units would in from what i'm aware of an XCOM or a fire emblem uh, characters have cards that are associated with them that allow you to do a specific attack or another thing on the field when they're in play. Um, and it was either every turn or every like phase or mission, you would draw cards out of this deck randomly, and whatever cards are in your hand are the moves and things you can do in the field like you never have your full arsenal of abilities per character at your disposal it's a chance draw i did not like that (laughs) that's something that doesn't really sit with me um i really liked turn-based strategy games like company of heroes Mm -hmm. like some of the total war games um but yeah this when i saw the gameplay of this i was like yep that's not for me so probably will not be playing this i'm interested to see like what this actually looks like now Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean revamp reveal that seems like it's like they're taking a different approach to talking about this game maybe Mm -hmm. or maybe that that just means um they're just revamping like the marketing for this game but at the same time like revamp reveal too like they've already revealed this game like what have, what have they done in the meantime to to make this a new reveal? That's that's yeah. interesting wording. So for those out there that are immediately turned off by strategy games, don't get excited. I don't think the revamp is it's not a strategy game anymore because Fraxis makes no. strategy strategy games. Right. I think what this could be potentially is a maybe the way that combat is presented is reworked or retooled where maybe it's not random anymore. Maybe it is, if it still has to be card based because it's just baked into it all, like maybe you can choose what cards and stuff you want to invest in. So like similar to Pokemon, right? Think about how you have so many moves you could teach your Charizard, but you settled on these four, right? that you have anytime you're encountering something if it's removing the randomness out of it as a strategy game fan i would be fully back on board excited for this game again um but like you said we have to wait and see and it's completely uh realistic that the revamp could just be the visuals changed right like that could be it 
Yeah. So. June, not too uh, far it, away. Yeah, I want to see what this looks like. It's probably not going to be a game I get, but I, I at least want to look into it. For sure. Uh, do you think that there's any world where it maintains its strategy element that you'd be interested in? Because like you said, you have a bit of a history with the genre. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I really like the strategy elements of like in, like having control over like full units of um, allies to control, and this didn't really seem like that. It seemed like, from what I remember, it seemed more like turn base um, and kind of less strategy, honestly. More like a party turn base system, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I, st- I think like positioning still matters to a degree on the battlefield but if that's the case jack i do think you would really enjoy fire emblem (laughs) based off of what you're saying right now yeah maybe uh, i know i loved like company heroes like oh let's get the mortar squad up here let's put them on this hill let's get the tanks over here that's what i liked yeah dude leveling up like a a pegasus knight or like a a bow cavalier in fire emblem Ooh, it's a it's Mm -hmm. a very good very good time uh Maybe not the best lead-in, because I just talked down on cards for a few minutes. Um, Marvel has announced Marvel Snap, which is now being tested. It was like a sign-up phase, but it's a card game for mobile and PC being worked on by the Hearthstone devs. Uh, I have a friend who is a game dev, and I was talking to him about this. He's very excited about it, uh, just based off of the way they've talked about it so far, but... Jack, I don't think you're a card guy either, based off of the way we've been talking. How do you feel no. about this announcement? No, uh, and this is also a mobile game as well, is that right? Mobile and PC, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't really get excited about mobile games all that much, um, unless it's like Simpsons Tapped Out. I really <laughs> That one really connected with me back in uh-huh. high school. Um, so yeah, combining this in a, in a card game, uh, definitely not the game for me. Mm-hmm. If you're a fan of card games, though, uh, it sounds like this is probably a really good one of those where, from my understanding, they're limiting it to like 150 cards. That's the entire game. Uh, Variations are strictly cosmetic. Like, it's not like, oh, my Doctor Strange card is way better than your Doctor Strange card because of the move that's on it or something like that. It's like, no, they're contracting out artists who have very distinct styles to be like hey if you want to design a doctor strange card we'll throw it in and make a collection out of it so just like design a bunch of the characters in your specific art style and that's the way that they're handling um variations of cards which i think is honestly probably the better thing to do rather than having hundreds and hundreds of cards that could break a game so curious about it The people playing it right now seem like they enjoy it, but Marvel games experimenting in all sorts of genres right now. Yeah. And, and that's to be applauded. Just, you know, obviously it's not going to hit for, for everyone. There's, there are certain games that will, certain games that, that will. Yeah. Uh, very brief aside about Marvel games though. Did you see that, uh, report recently from some like video game history, collection that's releasing later this year about the beginning of marvel games in 2014 um are you talking about the microsoft deal yeah how (laughs) (laughs) yeah that was a huge mistake microsoft Um, was approached first from the wording of that yeah i i believe the long and short of it was um marvel like activision just like sold the rights back to marvel and we're like yeah we kind of didn't find a lot of success with these games so good luck um and then marvel approached xbox as well as playstation and was like hey we kind of have this idea and microsoft decided now we're gonna stick with our own ip and like just focus solely on that and playstation was like all right yeah we'll we'll do stuff Mm -hmm. exclusively and then they made (laughs) spider-man like one of the greatest playstation games ever made so that's tough definitely tough you know what's even worse uh so for context, I believe, because I talked about this with Kevin on Gamescast the other day, I believe this was 2014. 
I Phil Spencer wasn't top dog yet. I think it was still Don Matrick. Uh, this was also a pre Halo Five Xbox, so this was like them still thinking that they were the shit with like Halo and Gears and all that stuff. So that's just wild to think about on its own but even weirder kevin brought this up sunset overdrive i think came out either that year or the year prior so hypothetically xbox could have been like we want to make a spider-man game and we want to work with insomniac again to make that spider-man game yeah because they were still a free agent they weren't bought by sony yet until like 2020 i think so exact same game could have ended up under the the green label which is wild yeah it's 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 microsoft's definitely going to be like it's one of those what if moments yeah because they took a bet on their own ip <laughs> didn't work out nope. and now they're acquiring uh every publisher Everything. under the sun <laughs> yeah. for other ips <laughs> they were like oh yeah our, our ip is not enough mm-hmm. we need to get everyone else's so it, they they eventually took that approach. They mm-hmm. just kind of missed out on probably, honestly, one of the bigger ones they could have had, mm-hmm. like the extent of the Marvel library they could have tapped into. Yeah, um, that's tough. Yeah, you, you hate to see it. I mean, I bet Phil Spencer has been either in a meeting or have been trying to set up a meeting for another character at some point right because they're working with lucasfilm for the indiana jones game now so like clearly they changed their mind but wild stuff yeah uh (laughs) it's kind of sad when you think about it it's like wow that was a bad business move oh yeah but hey guardians of the galaxy on game pass yeah there you go this game on game pass marvel's avengers Guardians of the Galaxy is on Game Pass. <laughs> uh, Moon Knight, assembled, out now, announced earlier today. Are you going to watch this? No. Moon Knight was not a show that really did much for me. Mm-hmm. Did very little for me. Um, so I'm not really interested in the behind the scenes. And like the, the these are sort of glorified marketing tools mm-hmm. anyways. Like The assembled documentaries are not really that interesting in my opinion i think the uh mandalorian ones are really in the the boba fett like the star wars ones are really fascinating because there's actually like impressive technology mm-hmm. not, not to say there's not in these shows but there's like incredibly impressive technology in those shows so i really like the behind the scenes stuff and especially like with luke coming back um and some of the shows um talking to mark hamill is really interesting but yeah i don't know I was watching these whenever they came out, but I'm probably only going to do that with shows I like really connect with. What about sure. you? Yeah, I haven't watched a couple of the ones that I even was interested in after they started doing them for like everything. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably going to pass on this one. Uh, although I am curious to see if there's any interviews with the editing team or creatives about some of the choices they made with how they represent my favorite part of the show i think which was uh the blackouts like seeing just the process or how they came up with that idea because i do think that's really cool but i don't think i'm gonna watch a whole hour long special to see if that's talked about yeah no so i'm with you you know what i am gonna watch what's that this daredevil reboot reimagining continuation remake start over part two unlimited whatever they're calling it that is coming according to variety i have so so many mixed thoughts on this let's hear them let's let's talk through your process on this i'm first blush very excited that daredevil's Mm -hmm. coming back uh it's a reboot but you have to imagine that our man's coming back he's already in the mcu Mm mm-hmm so that's exciting. I don't think that's officially confirmed, but like you gotta imagine. Um, yeah, you you wouldn't right. bring it. You wouldn't bring Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock, and Vincent D'Onofrio, Wilson Fisk back within a week of each other if that was not the intent, right? Right. Yes. So that's something to be hopeful about. Um, as I've expressed before, and I think we both kind of have, 
The Disney Plus shows are like very hit or miss. Mostly miss, I think, so far. And the Daredevil show, it's so good. So, I don't know. My my expectations are very low for this, considering that I don't think the management of the Disney Plus shows have been very good so far. And they all just feel kind of like standard Marvel fare at the end of the day, except for like a couple so far. So, my worry is we just get a generic Daredevil project that doesn't feel like the old daredevil that we got and th that comparison will always be there so i don't know i'm not with the state of like disney plus mcu shows so far ah, i'm not really excited i i would be more excited if they were like hey daredevil's got his own movie um because mm. i think i feel like with the mcu movie projects directors are allowed to be a little more uh have a little more of the reins in terms of like the production and the scope of things but i don't know the the disney plus shows kind of just seem like cookie cutter production line projects and i'm 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 worried for daredevil in that regard yeah so creatives involved in the project according to variety are not uh any of the showrunners writers that worked on the netflix series they are involved with Marvel Studios right now. They're just working on Echo, which is a show that, according to rumors, uh, Daredevil will pop up in. But the writing duo of Matt Corman and Chris Ord, whose credits include USA's Covert Affairs, which I've never heard of, uh, are the creatives tied to the project, according to Variety. Um, like you said... I'm kind of in a similar boat where at the very least, it's cool that we're getting more Daredevil from presumably Charlie Cox and surrounding cast. Uh, I'd be more excited if the original talent was involved on the creative side. But yeah, I'm not sure. The thing is, like, we have three seasons of really great to good Daredevil stuff. And from the sound of this, it's not like they're retconning that. So if it's all on the same page, everything that happened happened, but this is a new like phase of his life or a new interpretation of what he does after that experience in the three seasons we saw. I would be Seems open like to a different tone maybe and hope it works but yeah, yeah it, it seems like the way i think we're all thinking of how they're gonna t treat spider-man going forward like john wants had his trilogy and now if they continue it which i think they are it would be someone else taking the reins mm -hmm. um so if they treat it like that then it would be charlie cox coming back but totally different maybe um new adventures to go on obviously I don't know. <laughs> it's not... I'm being negative this episode, but I don't know. It's just, like, it's hard to kind of be really fully excited about this. Like, happy to see Charlie Cox come back, um, if that's the case. But, yeah, I think you're right. I think if they were like, hey, the whole... It's, it's a reboot, but, like, the whole creative team is back, and they are doing their a new spin on it um, with everyone coming back, I think that would be... a That'd be cause for great jubilation. But right now, I'm, I'm I'm slightly worried. Yeah, and I think the worry is valid. Um, but I, I did see it compared to, like, how back in the day, there was this Justice League cartoon, which came back as Justice League Unlimited, which when it came back as Unlimited, it was a bit of a different tone, and it was still the same story and characters and actors. So, like... I I would be open to a Daredevil that was, again, acknowledging everything that happened, but if it was a bit less bloody and they were like maybe just equally as brooding, but if he's at a different stage of his life where he has different priorities, I think that could still be interesting. But yeah, definitely going to be a high bar, I think, moving forward.
Yeah. So we'll see when we hear about this thing, but <laughs> probably not going to be for a while. No. Yeah. yeah. A couple of years out. In the more immediate future and immediate past, we received two trailers for two Marvel Studios productions. Uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, let's let's talk about Chi Hulk. Let's leave off on like an extremely positive note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy, uh, the She Hulk trailer, She Hulk Attorney at Law, I believe is the full. Yes. Yes. I uh, got its trailer. We got to see Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters and She Hulk. We saw Bruce Banner as Hulk, Professor Hulk specifically, uh, and. I think, I don't remember if he was in the trailer, but I think somebody said Wong is in the show. Oh, so. uh, didn't, yeah, didn't see him in the trailer. That would make mm-hmm. sense with the Abomination. Yes, because we also see, what is the actor's name? I always forget. Is, is it Tim Roth? I think you're right. Yeah, it's Tim, it says Tim Roth. So, what do you think of this? <laughs> um, hmm. I didn't love it. Obviously, the conversation's been about the CGI. Uh, obviously, it's not great. It looks kind of bad um, in a lot of instances. I- I'm curious to see the final product because this is it is Tim Roth. Uh, this is the just a trailer. It is coming out very soon though, so it's mostly done. Um, I think I like the tone of it. It's minus the CG because I think that's where most of the conversation's been. I think everyone's completely right about it. It does look awful. Um, very uncanny valley. But aside from that, I, I think the tone uh, interests me. It's uh, very lighthearted. Um, I think it looks like a fun show, mm-hmm. uh, which has been a little different from what we've gotten with uh, some of the, the Disney Plus shows so far. Uh, a lot of them have been pretty serious. So this is a departure from that. I like the idea of... Um, jennifer what's her la- walters yes what's- yeah i like the idea of her being like a, a superhero lawyer like this new superhero like lawyer defense uh team or whatever that sounds interesting um so i think from that side of things that is exciting to me i i came away from the trailer pretty negative though i watched it with my girlfriend and i started laughing at the end of it and she was like that looks really bad so she's not going to be watching that with me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt. It was a weird kind of roller coaster, this trailer. But what about you? It was definitely a vibe I wasn't expecting, but I don't hate it. Like, I, I'm with you. I've seen a lot of conversation all about the CGI. I've seen VFX artists be like, this is very clear. It's a rush job. It's not that they're bad artists, which like I... No. I can understand, especially because like it's it's a Disney Plus series. Everything's been delayed a million times. I'm absolutely sure there's probably crunch going on at that studio to make it like hit the deadline. Um, But yeah, I mean, like I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, why don't you just like paint her green? It's like I guarantee you that would probably look worse (laughs) because like if they're doing an entire show with just the actor painted and pulling some like ian mckellen uh <laughs> right uh, what's what's the his name frodo baggins i forget his real name elijah wood like perspective yeah. stuff like that's gonna look silly <laughs> you gotta um, get a lot of little kids <laughs> yeah like i don't know I, I i feel like i've kind of lowered my expectations for what we get visually out of the mcu shows i just think the conversation is so much more focused now because your lead is the cg right Right. um so i hope it improves by the time it comes out but i i when i saw it i wasn't like oh man i was like okay (laughs) this is it um but yeah, the tone is interesting. I'm with you because like it it feels like it's a Marvel sitcom in a way where the, it seems very lighthearted. I would not be surprised if most of these episodes are like half an hour long and it's focused on like 
kind of the slice of life element of what it's like being a superhero, which I think is interesting. And we haven't really seen outside of like Spider-Man, I guess. Right. Like I think, I think they, they could explore some interesting stuff with the show and I'm looking forward to it. I'm just expecting it to be fully camp. Yeah, no, it, it will. It seems like it'll, it, it'll end up like that. Um, yeah, which is different. It's, it's always good to introduce some different stuff to the MCU. Who knows it'll, mm -hmm. if it'll land, but, um, I appreciate the effort so far. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, this didn't strike me as something like right away. Where I was like, oh yeah, I'm into this. I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of like cautiously interested in this one. That's Hear me out on this. We, we've said some of the MCU shows have been hit or miss, right? Mm hmm Something consistent they all have is I think all of them I'm making sure in my head. Yeah, I think all of them take themselves super seriously, right? Yeah. This one doesn't from the trailer. So, like, maybe that's just at least going to be refreshing, you know? Yes. At the very least, there's that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's any good, we'll see. But mm -hmm. at least it'll be fun along the way, seemingly. Yeah, because, like completely being honest like with some of the shows it was like i either didn't watch them the, the day the episode came out or i was dreading being like okay i have to sit aside for an hour and watch this but like if this is a nice fun easy breezy watch every week i'll be completely into that yeah yep no i'm so. with you uh before then though that's coming out in august also that is the debut of she hulk uh, we have Thor Love and Thunder in July. We got a new trailer, full trailer. Did you watch it? What did you think of it? I did. Um, I think I was saying I wasn't going to watch any other Thor trailers, but I caved instantly, actually, when it came out. Just watched it. Uh, and it was great. I am very much looking forward to this movie. I think the takeaway for me from this was gore uh the god yeah. killer mm -hmm. with christian bale um i know nothing about the character and i think the choice to have him visually depicted as black and white and like any scene that he's in is black and white uh for the most part throughout the trailer was very visually stunning and i think it looks really cool and it's just christian bale being a bad guy and I think that he has like some very good villain potential, very good villain potential. Um, just alongside everything else in the trailer, it looks fantastic. Um, I don't know. I think this one's shaping up to be a real good one, Christian. I'm on the hype train. Yeah, I, I, I think so as well. And I think it's going to be better than Ragnarok personally. <laughs> uh, not that I don't like Ragnarok. I just think Ragnarok is two movies and I really love one of them. And I think the other one is like a seven, you know, this from the looks of it so far seems like they have fully cut ties with the, the baggage of Thor and Taika is able to just make a Taika YTD movie, uh, that is following up the better parts of Ragnarok. Um, how they work in Jane and that history, I think can maybe make it feel a bit more closer to Ragnarok, but I don't think there's going to be those like two very major differences in the movie where every time we cut to Hela and uh, dread, I was like, okay, let's go, let's go back to <laughs> Sakaar. Um, but yeah, the trailer was great. It was awesome. Christian Bale. I can't wait to watch him. Do you think he's going to, like, lean into the horror, like, not horror, but, like, the really intense villain stuff, or do you think he's just going to be a punchline all the time? Uh, I think it'll be both. I think he will uh, be, like, the probably the most serious part of the movie, and then they'll definitely, like, play around with punchlines. That's the thing about, I mean, that's pretty much every MCU movie, mm -hmm. but I feel, especially with 
Taika, is, he has a very like comedic sense. He has very comedic sensibility, so that will probably be pretty present. Um, we'll see how that shapes up. I think that was some parts of Ragnarok I didn't enjoy, um, but some I did. Like it, it, it's kind of like James Gunn in a way, where like a lot of the comedy like does not hit, and then, but when it does, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's probably where we'll end up with them. Yeah, I think this has great potential. It could very easily, I think, be the best Phase 4 movie that we've had so far. Um, and I know the bar is high after the last two, but yeah, I think it's shaping up to be a good one. And um, yeah, any other final thoughts on the Love and Thunder trailer? Um, Thor's going to die in this one. That's he is going to die? yeah interesting i think he's gonna die okay i honestly feel very safe in that prediction okay because this is like you know wrapping up his story i don't think he's gonna continue on you have jane coming in there's a god killer involved i think there's a sacrifice play made but i I, i'm glad you bring that up because i have i have trouble with this i do not see a world where natalie portman wants to be in more marvel movies for the next few years than chris hemsworth does (laughs) right like sure she seems like busy (laughs) right and she (laughs) seems like she just has a higher bar for herself I, i know she did that the thor movies and the prequels but like I feel like she has a lot of pull, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Chris Hemsworth hasn't been in, like, a black swan, you know? Like, she has. Right, so, yeah. Do, like, do you think that she's going to stick around long-term and be, like, the, the new Thor for the MCU? I mean, I'm surprised they brought her back in the first place. Um, right? But I think if she if she's back, like, they probably... They probably got her to come back. I, I know they're not doing like the multi movie deals now, but I would imagine seeing her again. I'd be surprised if we didn't at this point. The fact that we got her back now mm-hmm. kind of means that the door is kind of open for her to come back and for her to be not just a side character, like to be Thor. Like that's right. that's a really big opportunity. Um and I feel like she probably sees the potential in terms of like representation for her being on screen. Um mm-hmm. and the importance of that. So yeah, I could definitely see her back. I'm, I would be kind of surprised if we didn't. Yeah, I'm it, not it, saying... Even if she's not, yeah. like, you know, like, coming back as much as Chris Hemsworth did. I can see her coming back, though. So. Yeah, like, I I don't know, because, like, just the mantle of Thor, I feel like, is just such a core part of the MCU at this point that if it is a swap, right, I, I feel like the expectation from audiences would be they'd want to be seeing more Thor things, consistently out of either the thor franchise or if there's a team up movie thor should be there where i know hemsworth didn't show up in like civil war or um some of the other like smaller things where people popped up but like yeah i don't know i i I think there's a possibility for sure but i i think the option you said where it's like maybe it's not as frequently as Hemsworth was there um just because like I said I don't know I feel like Chris Hemsworth's career is Thor and a couple other things and I feel like this is Natalie Portman's fun thing she does Mm. right I don't know yeah I don't know she was like she left in a way because they took Patty Jenkins from Mm -hmm. uh the Thor sequel Mm-hmm. like so it seems like she was like i'm completely done uh so the fact that she's back is like surprising enough and I, I don't know i feel like they i feel like she probably looked at uh the role and also like the potential for future appearances to to actually come back mm-hmm. um so i could see her back i definitely can i really think this is like a way for this movie this is like the epilogue for for thor's story i feel in a way um because we got that with some characters already. Like, Spider-Man kind of had his thing with Far From Home and then leading into No Way Home. Um, and, like, Thor is a character we've had for, like, over 10 years now in the MCU. 
So mm-hmm. I feel like it's probably his time. And this is the, yeah. the first four movie uh, franchise in the MCU, which is mm-hmm. that's a lot. Yeah, it it is. It's the like you said, the first. It's hitting before I, th- Captain America and Spider Man, which I think are the only others that have been announced to have a fourth so far, but. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We will, of course, discuss once it's here. But great trailer. I think I'm good for the rest of them. I don't need to see any more. No, you're right. But in the meantime, we'll be able to play as Jane Foster in Marvel's Avengers. (laughs) Probably. Yes, hopefully. It's funny that's announced. Doesn't feel real, though. Yeah. Well, hey. Just to go full circle, they said patch 2.5 would bring Jane Foster, and 2.5 is next. So mm-hmm. however long that's going to be, a week, two weeks, three weeks, three months, I don't know. But uh, until then, Jack, where can the agents of Excelsior find you? Yep, you can follow me on social media at Fascinated Jack. What about you, Christian? You can find me on Twitter and TikTok at ChunTUD2. YouTube.com slash JoyClicks is where you can go to catch the video version of Excelsior every weekend. Or if you'd rather listen to it on podcast services, you can do so by going to your service of choice. Rating and reviewing is a free way to help the show out. It takes a quick second. We appreciate it a ton. And if you want to help us out further, you can do so by going to Patreon.com slash JoyClicks at the $1 and $5 tiers. Five bucks will give you producer credit on every show we produce, like Aaron Easton and Jose Garcia. So thank you very much. And that's it for Excelsior. Who knew we'd have so much to talk about with Marvel's Avengers? Uh, the E3, not E3 season, is about to pop off. Marvel Games, maybe Marvel's Avengers, making some waves. We'll wait and see. But until then, Excelsior. Excelsior. <laughs>